I'm going to turn my attention now to the central fells in book three that covers the area from Ambleside to Keswick, uh, the eastern boundary being the main road, the 591, between the two towns. So the western boundary is going to be Borodor and Langstrath, and in the south you would have the Langdale Pikes. These books, when they first came out, and I think the original copies would be worth a lot of money now, but the price then, in 1958, when this was first published, was 12 shillings and sixpence. And one of the places I always went to and had a look at quite quickly were the, the, the notes, the personal notes in the back of the book. And here he bemoans the fact that books one and two could be out of date already due to the fact that fences have been constructed, maybe buildings, making the route finding a little bit more uh, difficult. The interesting thing is that you can still pick up original copies, reprinted of course, of these books, what, many years later? We're talking about at least 60 years, are we? Something like that, uh, since their publication. Also, as I'm describing walks, these are fell walks, and therefore I would get into trouble if I didn't say that if you wish to leave the roads or valleys, you must wear boots, protective clothing. It's uh, quite amazing that the higher you go in the fells, the colder it becomes, and if you suffer the misfortune of getting caught in a shower, then the temperature drops even further. So, you have been warned. Anyway, we're going to look at the programme, I hope, in the comfort of our own homes. First, we perambulate the perimeter. For many years, I stayed at H.F. Holliday's Hotel at Derwent Bank, which borders Derwent Water. Facing east, it is perfect for a sunrise, and the prominent fells across these placid waters are in the central group, Walla Crag and Blibri Fell. Fell walkers who like to demonstrate their expert knowledge by quoting fell heights in feet from memory will find Walla Crag easy. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1,234 feet. You don't have to be a fell walker to visit the Castlerigg Stone Circle, just outside Keswick. Fell walkers might be more interested by the wonderful panorama of fells that surround this sacred spot. Whilst Skidder and Blencathra soon attract the eye, look south instead to Dale Bottom. Beyond is Thelmere, but it's out of sight. It is sheltered by a steep-sided valley separating Helvellyn, which you can see on the left, it's in the eastern group, from the central chain peeping into view on the right. I shall commence our survey of the central fells at its southern end, bordered by the road from Umberside to Great Langdale. Here too is Windermere, the largest natural lake in England, extending just over 11 miles down to Lakeside, a popular haunt, but we shall turn our backs on this pleasure, seeking instead the sanctuary of Lufferick Fell, or simply known as Lufferick. As an introduction to fell walking, you can do no better than Lufferick. Having gained the top all of 1,101 feet, the surrounding fells that include the Langdale Pikes and Fairfield are temptation enough to explore further. The fell's girth is out of all proportion to its modest height, covering a huge area, and Wainwright obviously thought much of the fell as he devotes 16 pages to it describing the many routes of ascent that include from Clappersgate, Ambleside and Rydal. 
popular is Lafrig Terrace, easily reached from White Moss Common without having to climb the whole fell. This classic and justly famous view looks north over Grasmere, and in the far distance is the road over Dunmail Rays. The fells from left to right are the eastern spur of Silver Howe, then Calf Crag, Gibson Knot and Helm Crag. In the background is Ulscarf and Steel Fell, and across Dunmail Rays rises Dolly Wagon Pike, a name that captures the imagination. Don't ask, but possibly based on Old Norse, as does its western spur, Willy Wife Moor. Through the Dunmail Rays you can just make out Lonscale Fell, one of the northern fells between Skidder and Blencathra. By the way, come back here in autumn and this view is a knockout. Combine a visit to Lufrig with an exploration of its two main lakes at its feet, Grasmere and Rydalwater. And don't forget, this is Wordsworth country, with Duff Cottage and Rydal Mount not far away. Cross the main road and ascend White Moss Common for one of the best views in Lakeland. Now on the other side of the fell is its secluded tarn, hardly seen from the top and rarely visited. It can be reached on foot from Skellith Bridge and combined with an ascent of the fell. The Lake District is blessed or cursed, according to your point of view, with honeypots, popular areas that draw crowds in their hundreds, if not thousands. Now, one such honeypot is Ashness Bridge, on the road to Watenleth, and even when you arrive and have the place to yourself, there are other photographic challenges. Clarity of light is important for that distant glimpse of don't water, backed by Skidder. But the other problem you cannot see, because I have come at the right time. You can see many trees on the left, but come later, and heavy shadows are cast across the bridge, which need to be well illuminated by arriving earlier. Now this shot was taken at 9.54am in June, and can look even better in autumn, but then problems related to light are more critical because the sun is much lower in the sky and therefore shadows are longer. There is limited parking nearby, convenient for a second highlight, the so-called surprise view that looks over Derwent Water. Choose a calm day, and the photographic surprise can also be a reflection of clouds in the lake. This road to Watenlath, best avoided in August, takes us into the heart of the central fells. As with Lafric, we seek the sanctuary of a fell, this time Grange Fell, and its amazing vistas over Borodell. The names given to Lakeland Fells were christened many centuries ago by farmers and shepherds, but I wonder how the rock tower on the summit of Grange Fell got the name Jopperty Howe. Wainwright, in his introduction to Grange Fell, does not encourage a visit when he says that it is nothing on the map. He soon qualifies the remark by stating that in a small compass there is concentrated beauty, romance, interest and excitement of the typical Lakeland scene, which we now seek. Add to this the sudden revelation of a glorious view over Borodell with Rostwaite at our feet and it's perfect. Now the panorama of fells are from the southern group, starting with the tip of Bow Fell, then Glaramara, Great End and Scorful Pike. Across Seathwaite Valley is the northern flank of Great Gable. 
walk across the fell top, and to the north is yet another great vista, this time of derwent water backed by Skidder again. What more can one ask? Before you climb Grange Fell, explore Wattenleth Hamlet and its town. Look carefully at the ground by its bridge, and you are in good company. The area a favourite haunt of Prince Charles when taking time off from official duties. If you don't wish to climb Grange Fell but make your way down to Borodell, a path skirts the summit of the fell at a lower level, offering a viable and easier alternative. Because of their distinctive profile, the Langdale Pikes are the most easily recognisable fells in South Lakes, but their height is deceptive. Harrison Stickle only 2,403 feet, much lower than Scoffle. Viewed from Elterwater Common or Bleed Town, their prominence is impressive, but deceptive, their mountain profile making them look much higher. From this viewpoint, it is perhaps difficult to appreciate that the ground behind the peaks goes higher, reaching 2,500 feet at high rays. Here too is Sergeant Man, that looks down on the pikes with views east and south that are utterly breathtaking. I climbed from Grasmere, a village popular with tourists and not only for Wordsworth. Fellwalkers enjoy the diversity of routes to the fells that include Fairfield and Helvellyn. A popular walk into the heart of the fells without reaching the dizzy heights is to Easdale Town, which I did one winter, almost on my own. You can continue to Sergeant Man from Easdale, but in summer try a quieter route via Far Easdale, a parallel valley north of Easdale. It is longer, much longer, but the peace and quiet is therapeutic. There is a steep climb at the far end, taking you up onto the tops and another world. And again, whilst everyone is flocking to the Langdales, you may have Sergeant Man to yourself, 
not to mention the views. Windermere is the prominent feature in this view, and on a clear day, but not today, you might, it's possible, you might see Ingleborough in the Yorkshire Dales. Nearby are the Langdale Pikes. At our higher elevation, their distinctive mountain profile is still very much in evidence. The foreground fell now pave the arc, and the tarn below is Stickle Tarn. Across Great Langdale and Little Langdale, the view extends to the prominent peak of Wetherlam and its ridge going on to Coniston Old Man. On the final page of Wainwright's personal notes mentioned earlier, he reminisces about the delights of walking the central fells. Alone, what a celestial beauty I found there in the quiet of late autumn and early winter. What rich, warm colour. I walked on golden carpets between golden tapestries, marvelling anew at the supreme craftsmanship that had created so great a loveliness, and at my own good fortune to be in its midst, enjoying a heaven I had done nothing to deserve. One cannot find the words to describe it, only an inexpressible humility fills the heart. These are words that I have cherished for many years, whilst enjoying the sublime beauty of my own walks in the Lake District since 1957. <laughs>